his gaze between Miss Hagmire and the masterpiece, he tweaked the positions of, of the arm, hand, and fingers. P.W., he said, you wanted a hagapult? That's a Roger, P.W. confirmed. And Lily Matisse, you wanted a cottage cheese assault. Lily Matisse gave an eager nod. And we all want to get Lumpkin, right? Oh, yeah, said P.W. Definitely, said Lily Matisse. Well, then, Leon took a moment to fine-tune the angle of the spoon. Ready, he said. He made a few minor adjustments. Aim, he made a few more. Fire, he gave the doll's arm a decisive flick. Splat! Uh-oh, said P.W. You missed Lumpkin, exclaimed Lily Matisse. And hit Groot, said P.W. Leon groaned. I can see that. All three of them looked on as Mr. Groot blurted something at his presumed attacker. Leon quietly bit the... Uh, quiet. Let me try that again. Leon quickly bent the doll's head so that Miss Hagmire would turn away without responding. Mr. Groot removed a shop rag from his pocket and wiped the cottage cheese off his ear. Then, apparently calmed down, he refocused his attention to the half-eaten, open-faced grilled cheese sandwich resting on his plate. I don't get it, said Leon. I aimed perfectly. Remember what the coach is always telling us, said P.W. Passion and practice make magic. Better try again. I don't know, said Lily Matisse. Maybe once is enough. Oh, come on, said P.W. Leon grabbed hold of the doll's arms and shot a second spoonful of cottage cheese at Lumpkin. Splat! Youch, Lily Matisse said. Not again, moaned Leon. He couldn't understand why his aim was so off. Once more, Lumpkin escaped unscathed. Mr. Groot was not so lucky. Miss Hagmire's cottage cheese hit his cheek, slid down his face, collected briefly at his chin, and then dribbled onto his shop smock, just above an oval patch that said, Mr. Groot. He's not looking happy, P.W. observed with a smirk. Lily Matisse said, would you be happy if you got smacked in the face with cottage cheese? Twice, P.W. noted enthusiastically. Leon was so annoyed by his misfire, he didn't think to let go of the doll. This oversight had significant, unexpected consequences. Mr. Groot was about to demand an explanation from Miss Hagmire, but he stopped short when he observed her pointing a discharged spoon straight at his head. It was clear he thought Miss Hagmire was taunting him, using the utensil to say, gotcha. This misinterpretation prompted a change in Mr. Groot's normally mild demeanor. He again wiped the cottage cheese from his face, picked up the half-eaten, open-faced grilled cheese sandwich, looked Miss Hagmire straight in the eye, paused momentarily to take aim, and returned fire. Regrettably, Mr. Groot's marksmanship was just as bad as Leon's. The half-eaten, open-faced grilled cheese sandwich missed its target. And instead, grazed the shoulder of Mr. Rattles, an upper school English teacher. Although the half-eaten, open-faced grilled cheese sandwich didn't make much of a mess when it winged Mr. Rattles, it did cause him to flinch. And in flinching, Mr. Rattles dropped the sandwich he was eating, a piping hot sloppy joe. It landed face down on his soon piping hot leg. Once Mr. Rattles had stopped howling and jumping up and down, he grabbed a bowl of lime jello, leaned over, and deposited its contents on Mr. Groot's head. After that, nature took its course. A full-scale, all-out, take-no-prisoners food fight erupted in the classical school lunchroom. And it was the teachers, the teachers, who had started it. Or so it appeared. Leon, P.W., and Lily Matisse sought refuge behind the steam tables. 
So much for keeping things quiet, said Leon as a hamburger bun bounced into his lap. P.W. surveyed the lunchroom through the mists rising from the steam table. It's just like the castle defense in the Middle Ages. What are you talking about, said Lily Matisse. Simple, said P.W. Take a look out there. There are the launchers and there are the pourers, only instead of boulders getting tossed from castle walls, it's curly fries and tater tots. And instead of molten lead, it's milk and OJ that are poured out. A flying fajita forced P.W. to duck. And I'll tell you one thing, Lily Matisse, your mom is definitely a poor. Check out the salad bar. Lily Matisse poked her nose over the top of the steam table and saw Signora Pecora, and the Italian teacher, ladling French dressing on Madame P, the French teacher. Madame P retaliated with thick gobs of Italian dressing. And suddenly, Regina Jaspro came into view and confirmed P.W.'s observation by squirting the contents of a plastic ketchup bottle onto the head of Mr. Juiced, the third grade teacher. A piece of chocolate cake caught P.W. in the shoulder. Position compromised, he cried. Fall back, fall back. Where to, yelled Leon. Over there, said P.W. He pointed to a row of recycling bins. The three of them zigzagged under a volley of chicken fingers and string beans to the colorful bins which were located near the kitchen. P.W. took mixed. Lily Matisse took cans. Leon hunkered down behind plastics. Thomas Workowski had already claimed paper. P.W. peered over his lid. Incoming! He screamed. Seconds later, a barrage of carrots pounded the container. It's the coach, P.W. cried, and man, oh man, is he throwing heat. Let's get out of here, said Lily Matisse, using a bin lid.